Story 1. A person entered the prison, where bunk beds were provided. Strangely, the guy on the top bunk seemed to be mute and never uttered a word. From the very first day of his imprisonment, this person began experiencing frequent nightmares, and the content of these dreams remained the same. He dreamed of himself walking down a pitch black alley, where a woman in a red dress murdered a child. He desperately tried to call for help, but his voice wouldn't come out, and he couldn't move his feet. In less than a month, this ordeal had tormented him beyond words. One night, instead of sleeping, he kept his eyes wide open, determined not to succumb to slumber. In the middle of the night, he suddenly heard the person on the top bunk speaking. The voice was deep and seemed like a murmur, as though someone was talking in their sleep or narrating a story. He listened intently for a while, and a chill ran down his spine. You're walking down a pitch black alley, the surroundings dimly lit. You see a woman in a red dress. She raises a knife and kills a child. Story 2. A female journalist went to the countryside to gather information, and she stayed in a rundown small inn overnight. After entering the room, the lighting was dim. There was a painting across from the bed, depicting a man with sharp features, lifelike, especially his eyes. When she went to sleep at night, she always felt like someone was secretly watching her in the darkness. So, she decided to avoid looking at the painting as much as possible. Early the next morning, she walked over to take a closer look, and her scalp tingled. It turned out that it wasn't a painting at all, but a window. Story 3. A person received a phone call at the company, and the caller only said one sentence, you've lost something at home. After returning home, the person searched high and low, going through cabinets and drawers, but found nothing missing, not their ID, bank cards, phone, wallet. Everything was intact. They suspected it was a prank. That night, as they slept, they were awakened in the middle of the night by a chilling whisper in their ear, you've lost a key. Story 4. A person lived in a rented apartment. In the middle of the night, they faintly felt like someone was rummaging through the cabinets. Suddenly, the realization hit that it might be a thief. However, this timid young woman was too scared to get up, so she pretended to be asleep with her eyes closed, waiting until she didn't hear any more sounds. She thought the thief had left and let out a long sigh of relief. Just as she was about to get up, someone suddenly whispered in her ear, I know you're not asleep. Story 5. This is a story I heard from a college friend. A certain woman moved to the city to work and rented a very small house. The landlord said, there's another girl who will be living with you, is that okay? The woman replied, sharing the rent between two people is even better since I don't have much money. Where is she? Quote. The landlord said, she'll be back at night. After the landlord left, the woman suddenly realized that there was only one bed in the house. Where would the other girl sleep? She quickly called the landlord and informed him that they were missing a bed in the house. The landlord sounded surprised, but isn't there a bunk bed in the room? The woman chuckled. No. The landlord said, I'll come take a look tomorrow. By the way, the person who sleeps on the lower bunk pays one third of the rent, and the person on the upper bunk pays two thirds. 
You both need to discuss and decide who sleeps where. After hanging up the phone, the woman found the landlord's explanation increasingly bizarre. Night fell quickly, and the woman sat alone in the house, reading. As the night grew later, there was no sign of the other girl returning. Eventually, she opened her luggage and lay down on the bed. Just as she was drifting off to sleep, she faintly heard someone saying to her, Sister, if you're on the upper bunk, you should pay two-thirds of the rent. She shuddered awake. Upper bunk. Thinking for a moment, she suddenly jumped up, turned on the light, and focused her gaze under the bed. The bedsheet hung down, revealing only a dark gap. She bent down, slowly lifting the bedsheet, revealing beneath it a girl's face, partially visible. The girl spoke in a cold voice. Thank you, but we don't need it. The dim lighting made it hard to discern her expression. The woman felt that she might have made the unexpected guest wary. She explained her intention again and requested that the pizza be given to the children. A lukewarm breeze wafted through the gap in the door. Then, beneath the woman's line of sight, she saw the faces of two children, accompanied by the woman's voice. The door was only slightly ajar, with three faces aligned vertically. In that case, I'll take it. Please give it to me. The woman passed the pizza box through the gap in the door. Just beside her, the hands of the children seemed to be waiting to receive the box. Three faces stared at the woman through the gap. Thank you. The voice that faintly reached her ears felt unsettling, and the woman hurriedly returned to her own home. An unexplainable sense of aversion lingered in her mind. The images of the children's faces were imprinted in her memory. Faces arranged vertically. As this thought surfaced, she began to tremble. Her pace quickened as she aimed to distance herself from that house as swiftly as possible. However, the elevator wouldn't come. The faces she had seen earlier were oriented horizontally. She pressed the button repeatedly, but there was no sign of it coming up. She resorted to using the emergency stairs. Intense headaches and nausea overcame her. As she pushed open the heavy door of the emergency stairs, she felt eyes on her from behind. When she turned to look, she saw three faces in the corner of the hallway, about ten meters away. Just like when she had glimpsed them through the door, only half of their faces were visible, their empty eyes fixated on her. The cold daylight illuminated the apartment corridor casting a clear light on the three faces. Ignoring the cast on her neck, the woman began to descend the stairs, but she felt as though the staircase had no end. Three faces were arranged vertically, continuously gazing at her, with peculiar hands supporting their heads from behind. Story 6 There was a river, seemingly narrow but deceptively deep. A boatman plied his trade ferrying people across the river. This was a thief's boat, and the boatman was a villainous character. One day, a city dweller took his boat to cross the river. The city dweller had a shiny gold watch, a mechanical marvel that was a luxury in those days. The boatman's wicked thoughts took over, and he lunged forward to snatch the watch. A struggle ensued, and the boatman struck the city dweller with an oar, causing his death. He then tied a heavy stone to the body and tossed it into the river. The boatman put on the stolen mechanical watch and continued ferrying people. 
A few days later, he accidentally dropped the watch into the river. In his haste to retrieve it, he jumped into the water but couldn't find the watch. Instead, he stumbled upon the very corpse he had cast into the water twelve years ago. Twelve years later, the boatman stopped ferrying altogether. On this particular day, he was fishing in the river, trying tirelessly until dusk, without catching a single fish. Growing frustrated, he made one last attempt and pulled up a metallic object. To his astonishment, it was the watch he had dropped into the river. Even more surprising, the watch was still ticking. How could the watch still be working after 12 years? The boatman was puzzled. Suddenly, a head emerged from the water with a resounding splash. It was the city dweller. His face was pale, but he smiled and said, I wind it every day underwater. Quote. Story 7. On a night of pouring rain, it seemed as if the sky had developed a hole, and the rain continued to fall relentlessly. A daughter and her mother were at home watching TV when suddenly the doorbell rang. Ding dong. The mother wondered who would visit on such a rainy day and checked the front door through the intercom. A woman wearing a hat stood there and said, Um, could I borrow an umbrella? Quote. The mother felt sympathy for the woman standing in the rain and decided to lend her an umbrella, considering it as getting rid of an unused one. She gently opened the door and, in an instant, the woman outside yanked the door from her grip. Startled, the mother panicked and avoided looking at the person's face, attempting to close the door. The daughter, witnessing the scene, joined in to help shut the door with all her might. Despite locking the door, the woman outside tried to forcefully open it, even resorting to kicking and threatening the mother and daughter. Perhaps due to the commotion, a neighbor shouted, Why so loud? The woman outside hurriedly fled. Several months later, the daughter, now a college student, lived alone. On a rainy night when the rain was heavy, she and her mother discussed the events of a few weeks prior over the phone. The mother recounted the details of the incident from back then to her daughter. The woman in the rain. She claimed she had no umbrella, walked through the rain. Yet her clothes weren't wet at all. And then, she was holding a stick. When I took a closer look, I realized that, she, was actually a man. Hearing her mother's words, the daughter grew fearful. Learning the truth behind the incident kept her awake at night. Anxious, she went to the entrance hall and locked the door, finally letting out a sigh of relief. As she headed toward her room, the doorbell suddenly rang. The daughter turned back toward the door with a frightened expression and asked, Who is it? Quote. Um, could I borrow an umbrella? Quote. Story 8. During her vacation, a female college student decided to work as a caregiver for an elderly blind woman. The elderly woman lived on the outskirts, and the journey involved a series of twists and turns, with the car finally coming to a halt in an unfamiliar environment. On her first day at this household, the young woman couldn't shake the feeling that someone was lurking in the shadows, watching her. She started suspecting that there might be an unseen presence in the house. This continued for several days. Then, one night, while the young woman was heading to the bathroom, she suddenly noticed something odd. There was a light on in the elderly woman's room. Story 9 
A woman came to the city for work and rented a very small house. The landlord said, there's another girl who will be living with you, is that okay? The woman replied, it's even better if we can share the rent, as I don't have much money. Where is she? Quote. The landlord said, she'll be back at night. After the landlord left, the woman suddenly realized that there was only one bed in the house. Where would the other girl sleep? She quickly called the landlord and informed him that they were missing a bed in the house. The landlord sounded surprised, but isn't there a bunk bed in the room? The woman chuckled, no. The landlord said, I'll come take a look tomorrow. By the way, the person who sleeps on the lower bunk pays one third of the rent, and the person on the upper bunk pays two thirds. You both need to discuss and decide who sleeps where. After hanging up the phone, the woman found the landlord's explanation increasingly bizarre. Night fell quickly, and the woman sat alone in the house, reading. As the night grew later, there was no sign of the other girl returning. Eventually, she opened her luggage and lay down on the bed. Just as she was drifting off to sleep, she faintly heard someone saying to her, Sister, if you're on the upper bunk, you should pay two-thirds of the rent. She shuddered awake. Upper bunk. Thinking for a moment, she suddenly jumped up, turned on the light, and focused her gaze under the bed. The bed sheet hung down, revealing only a dark gap. She bent down, slowly lifting the bedsheet, revealing beneath it a girl's body, already mummified. Story 10. R and B were best friends. Their relationship was incredibly close, and others envied their friendship. A, who was usually weak in health, suddenly got worse and was hospitalized. While her parents were diligently taking care of her, his condition did not improve, and the doctor warned him to prepare for the worst. One day, B came to visit A as usual. A asked, we'll always be friends, right? Of course. So you need to get better quickly. Thank you, comforted by her friend's words, A fell asleep with a smile. The next day, her parents found that A had passed away, peacefully. B, with tear-stained face, attended A's funeral and received a letter from A's mother. She said that A had written it for B before she passed away. Hearing that this was the last message from her friend, B choked up. On her way back home, B opened the letter from A, and suddenly a truck from behind hit her at a high speed. Lost in the contents of the letter, B tragically died from the collision. The police inspecting the accident scene found a letter tightly held in her hand. Inside the letter was a short sentence. Come join me quickly. Story 11. On the way home after finishing the night shift, a sudden drizzle started. I wanted to find a place to take cover from the rain, but in order to catch the airing time of my favorite TV show, I had to hurry back. By the time I got home, even my underwear was wet. I rushed straight to the bathroom to take a shower. At that moment, laughter could be heard coming from the living room, as if the TV show had started. After quickly finishing my shower and coming out, the room was quite dark and the TV was turned off. When I turned the TV back on to watch the show, a chill ran down my spine in an instant. I realized that as soon as I got home, I had gone straight into the bathroom and hadn't even turned on the TV. 
Whose laughter was it that I heard from the living room while I was showering? Story 12. Living alone for a week, I'm naturally fearless, but many times I forget to lock the door. Today, I saw the news reporting that there's been a sharp increase in cases of stalking crimes targeting single women living alone. Suddenly, I felt uneasy and locked the door before going to bed for peace of mind. The next morning, I received a text message on my phone from an unknown number. Why did you suddenly lock the door yesterday? Quote. Story 13. There was a boy who had a special fondness for insects. One day, the insects that the boy had carefully nurtured died. The boy stared silently at the motionless insect, and suddenly, he took a knife and cut open its belly. Witnessing her son's chilling act, the mother was outraged. What are you doing? Because it's not moving, I think its batteries must have died, so I wanted to replace them. Seeing her son, the mother sighed with regret and told the boy that since it had already died, there was no way to revive it. But the boy replied, when dad stops moving, mom also cuts open his belly like this. The next day, a mother came to the police station to report that her son had gone missing. Story 14. I am a truck driver. One year, I was driving with my partner across a riverbed that had been dry for years. The bridge over the river was dismantled for the construction of a new one, and all vehicles had to pass under the bridge. On that day, a large truck broke down in the center of the river, and my truck got stuck in the water as well. Feeling drowsy, I got out of the truck to relieve myself, and when I got back in, I glanced at my watch and saw that it was exactly midnight. I lay back down and continued to sleep. During this time, I exchanged a few words with my partner. Feeling half asleep, it seemed like I had drifted off, but I could still hear my partner talking. Just then, I saw a woman in a white robe holding a child in white clothes walking towards me. The woman's long hair covered her face. When she reached me, she handed the child to me and said I should hold the child. I refused and told her I wouldn't hold the child. However, she kept trying to hand the child to me, and I kept pushing it away, back and forth, for about three or four rounds. Finally, I got frustrated and shouted loudly, I won't hold it. Suddenly, I woke up sat up in a start. My partner was startled by my reaction, and he asked, what's with all the commotion? I told him I had just had a dream. He inquired about the dream, but I didn't pay him any attention. I put on my shoes, opened the door, got out of the truck, and started swearing loudly on the street. I won't mention the exact words, but let's just say they were quite unpleasant. When I got back into the truck and checked the time, only a little over 10 minutes had passed. Later, I exchanged a few more words with my partner, lay back down, and fell asleep again. This time, I didn't dream at all, and I slept until it was broad daylight. I often have dreams that I can't remember, but strangely, this particular dream from over a decade ago is still vivid in my memory. Story 15 Once upon a time, deep within the remote mountains of Waijo, there lived a young couple. They resided in the sparsely populated wilderness, far away from human habitation. One night, the wife had a dream. In her dream, her father-in-law, who had passed away years ago, appeared to her and said, 
Tomorrow, I will face a life-threatening danger like never before. Please, you must save me. The following morning, the wife shared her dream with her husband. The couple discussed the strange dream and came to the unanimous conclusion that her deceased father-in-law must be reaching out to them with a request. However, the vague and ambiguous message left them puzzled about what exactly it referred to. After breakfast, the husband left for some errands in the wild, while the wife stayed home to weave. Before long, a commotion erupted outside, interrupting the wife's weaving. Startled by the sudden noise, she rushed out and saw the local lord, accompanied by a group of hunters, approaching their house. As she watched from a distance, a male pheasant flew by her side and darted into the house. Witnessing this, the wife immediately recalled the dream from the previous night. She thought to herself, perhaps, this is my father-in-law. I must save it. With this thought in mind, she followed the male pheasant into the house and quickly caught it. She placed the bird into a rice bin and covered it. The wife took a moment to gather her thoughts. Shortly afterward, some of the Lord's followers entered the house and inquired whether she had seen a pheasant running in. Summoning her courage, she adamantly denied it. However, one of the hunters insisted that he had indeed seen the pheasant fly into the house. Consequently, the group searched around, but fortunately, no one opened the rice bin to check. After an extensive search, they found nothing. Eventually, they concluded that the pheasant might have escaped into a cave, and they gradually left the area. Later, when the husband returned home, the wife urgently recounted the events of the morning, including how she had hidden the pheasant in the rice bin, explaining every detail. When I caught it, the pheasant didn't resist at all, she added. Moreover, it behaved very obediently inside the rice bin, never making a sound. I am sure it is my father-in-law. The husband nodded in agreement and approached the rice bin. He opened the lid and took out the pheasant. Strangely, the bird seemed to recognize him and remained calm, perching comfortably in his hand. One of its eyes was damaged leaving only a single eye that stared at him. The husband remarked, my father also lost vision in one eye. This pheasant's right eye is also blind. Just like my father, always looking at us with one eye. It's a pity. In his heart, my father must have thought, now, I am a pheasant. Instead of being captured by hunters, it's better to stay at my son's home and be fed. Your dream from last night has truly come true. Everyone has already listened to 15 stories. Please continue to listen to the sound of rain and fall asleep. Good night. Good night. Good night.